Welcome to lecture number nine for ECE 376 Embedded Systems, LCD Displays. Now, so far, we haven't been using the LCD that comes with your kit, mainly because in assembly, it's just too painful. Once you get to see, it's actually not too bad. And there's a couple different types of LCD displays. Um, to get output from your PIC processor, I could use LEDs. That's what we've been doing so far. LEDs are extremely fast. They give you binary information, on or off, uh, but it's hard to get much more information. For example, saying that the current time is 10110 doesn't really mean a whole lot. It'd be nice to have something that says the time is 3.45 p.m. That's what the character LCDs do. They let you display characters, like the letters and numbers. Uh, the general type of LCD displays a graphics LCD. Each of these little pixels I can control, and that way I can draw graphics, I can draw pictures, I can do letters. It's more versatile, but requires more coding. The one that we're using is a character LCD. What a character LCD display does is it has a microprocessor on the board. I send it data, such as send the character L. It will then turn on these pixels and display an L, where I send it the number zero. It'll turn on these pixels and make it look like the number zero. Character LCDs are much easier to use, uh, but they're a little bit slower. Now, to use a character LCD, you first have to connect up the hardware. And in terms of hardware, you need power and ground, of course. There's the contrast button. What the contrast knob does is that changes the voltage on pin 3. And if you turn this guy right here, that little pot, that sets the contrast for the LCD. If you don't see anything on it initially, you probably have the contrast to turn too far down. Go too far, kind of blackens out. So you just need to adjust that little potentiometer until you can start seeing characters on it. The other pins, uh, there is a RS, register, register Select. When I send data to it, I need to know do I want to send instruction number zero or display data number zero. Read write is you can read to the device, write to the device. Uh, e is the clock. When I send it data, I need to pulse the clock and let it know data is ready. And then you have the data lines. We're using 4-bit mode, so only the top 4 bits are being used, um, but there's also an 8-bit mode. And there's a backlight. Backlight is just there's an LED that makes the LED brighten up. The LCD display actually has a microprocessor on it, and I need to send information from the PIC processor to the LCD microprocessor. Like any processor, it has a command set. The commands are I can clear the display, move the cursor up to row 0, column 0, I can set the cursor direction, um, have the cursor shift, and so on. To initialize the LCD display, if you dig through the data sheets, you'll see that the steps you have to go through are I have to send the command 0011, pulse the clock, send the command 0011, pulse the clock, and so on. Basically go through the sequence, and the LCD display is now turned on for 4-bit mode. That's kind of annoying. So there's a program called LCD port D. Uh, once you get the LCD drivers working, this is where subroutines are nice. I don't have to go and fight it all the time. I can keep on reusing them. What this does is has a couple useful routines, like it's got wait milliseconds. If I want to wait 35 milliseconds, just do wait milliseconds to 35, and you'll burn 35 milliseconds, roughly. Uh, the pause is for the LCD that pulses the clock. On the LCD initialize, there it is. That's the previous code. If I send this command, uh, 3332280E0106, the LCD display is turned on. Uh, let's see, there you are. If I want to move to a certain row in a certain column, I need to send the instruction uh, for where I want to go. Um, and you would think the upper left corner would be address 0. It's actually not. Upper left corner is address 80, then increases 818283. Uh, the next row is C0. Uh, y, I have no idea, but that's just how it works. So to do a move command, I have to go through the following sequence. Or, again, there is a subroutine called LCD port D. What that has is an LCD move. I tell it to go to row 3, column 6 and it sends the corresponding instruction to move the cursor to that spot.
There's a couple other routines. This assumes that port D is connected to your LCD. That uses up pins 1 through 7. Pin 0 is not being used. Uh, we're actually going to use that for the NeoPixels coming up. The routines, I can wait 35 milliseconds or whatever you want. I initialize the LCD display. When you first boot up, you have to call that routine to turn on the LCD, otherwise it doesn't work. I can move to a certain spot on the display. I can write information, like display the number zero. I can display data such as bonus in the number one, two, three, four, five. I just send it data, display it as five decimal places or five digits and two decimal places. That would give you one, two, three, dot four five. So like one, two, three, four, five, six come three gives you six decimal or six digits and three decimal places. And LCD instruction one clears the display. So to give an idea what it looks like, uh, suppose I were to send the numbers zero through 20 to the LCD display. What I would expect is the number zero through 20 would appear. Um, actually it doesn't. To get the number zero to 20 to appear, I have to send the numbers 48 to 68 to the display. Uh, the reason being is there's an ASCII standard. The LCD displays data in ASCII. Whoever came up with the standard thought it made sense to have 48 mean 0, 49 mean 1, 50 mean 2. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it's now the standard, so we live with it. If I want to send the numbers A through F, 65 is A, 66 is B, uh, some other characters, A32 is a space, A13 is a carriage return, that's the ASCII standard. The LCD display displays data in ASCII. So likewise, when I send 48 through 68, it displays ASCII 48 through 68. That's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's what you see on the display, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's displaying in ASCII. Um, what I can do with it is suppose I want to count really, really fast. Here's a program that does that. I have to initialize the LCD display. Here's my counter, and then I'm just going to count really, really fast. So let's do that. Uh, I'll figure out how to increase the font size so you can see it. I'm just going to have time. Time is a 16-bit variable integer. It's just going to increment, move to row 1, column 0, and display it as five decimal places. Here I commented out the weight. If I compile this code, oh, also it's a sidelight. Up at the beginning, I need to include LCD port D.C. That takes that LCD routine and inserts it right here. Um, don't do it twice. A lot of people like including the source file and here. You can't do it twice because then I have two copies of LCD weight and you can't have two copies of the same routine with the same name. So only one spot. I prefer it in here. If I compile F10, this is what it looks like. I have just created a 2000 byte program. That's 1029 lines of assembly. Uh, again, this is part of the reason we're using C rather than assembly. It's not that bad in C. In assembly, this program's a bear. If I then download it, it reset, download. Once it's downloaded, it's running. So here, this is counting as fast as it can. You kind of see it's about 100 counts per second. That tells you that the LCD display routine takes about 10 milliseconds to call. Uh, next, suppose I want this to display time re resolution of 0.1 millisecond. Um, if I were to do this and say, wait 100 milliseconds, this should wait 100 milliseconds plus 10 milliseconds for everyone else. And here, this is what these guys do. This five says, give me five decimal places or five digits, one decimal place. So that now when I compile it, and then download the code. You can see I've got 2,076 bytes, 1,038 lines of assembly. Download the new improved code. Uh, note that it's actually really easy to modify code and download it. Now what I have, okay, the code's downloading, light's blinking. Once it's downloaded, this is my time in seconds. This is actually a little bit off. 
The reason it's off is if the wait routine was exactly 100 milliseconds, it's actually 110 now because the whole code includes the LCD routines. The LCD routines take about 10 milliseconds. So that's one of the problems with, with C coding. To get the timing just right, I have to sit there and see how long does everything take, uh, add a wait routine to make up the change, and then for one set of code, I can get the timing right. If I modify the code at all, the time will be off. Uh, so that's the second code. If I wanted to count the resolution of 100 milliseconds, this is slightly off. And you can see that on the oscilloscope. This is where oscilloscopes are your friend. To see what I want to make the timing, I can look on the oscilloscope and do something like this. I'm going to take a pin that I'm not, not using, like port A pin 1. I'm going to set it, call the wait routine, then clear it. On the oscilloscope, I can now look at port A pin 0 and see that while it's high, that's my wait routine. That's 100 milliseconds. This guy right here is everyone else in the code. That's all this part right here. All the rest of it takes 9 or 8.1 milliseconds. So to make it be 100 milliseconds, I need the wait routine to be 92 milliseconds. We'll say it for everyone else. Do it right, and then I can actually get a C code to be 100 milliseconds per count and have it measuring time in seconds. Modify the C code, however, and the timing's off. Uh, it seems like there ought to be a better way to do it, and there is. That's interrupts. We're going to get to interrupts a little bit later. But right now, that's just C coding. And with the LCD display, the thing to note is the LCD display is way more convenient than just the LEDs. I can actually get information out. Uh, but it makes the code quite a bit larger. We now have a thousand lines of assembly when we compile our code. That's lecture number nine, LCD displays.